Assalamu alaikum. Welcome our dear students. Today we will continue the part 3 of the lesson Electrostatics. At the end of this part, you will be able to know the function of an electroscope and the mode of charging by induction and conduction. Let's remember we have three types of charging <coughs> by friction which is the, the two rubbed objects will be charged with, oppo with opposite sign by induction we have without grounding the object is polarized and with the grounding the object is charged with opposite sign and finally by contact the two objects will be charged with the same sign to clarify the idea of electrification we must introduce the device called electroscope which is a device that is used for detecting whether an object is charged or uncharged there are many design of electroscopes the main parts of an electroscope are the knob or on the other side the metal pan metal rod or contacting stem plastic or glass two thin metallic leaves here we have some electroscope are designed to have one thin gold leaf as we see in this figure and others are designed to have conductor needle free to move now how can we use the electroscope to detect whether an object is charged or not there are two methods method one by induction we approach an object near the knob of the electroscope if the leaves remain in their original position then the object is neutral if the leaves repel each other then this object is charged method 2 by conduction we put the object in contact with the knob of the electroscope if the leaves remain in their initial positions then the object is neutral if the leaves repel then this object is charged in both methods the angle of deviation of the leaves depends on the quantity of charges on this object now mode 1 by induction When we approach a negatively charged rod toward the knob of the electroscope, the negative charge on the rod repels the electrons of the electroscope, forcing them to move downward toward the leaves, leaving the knob positively charged. This causes that the leaves to gain electrons and have a temporary negative charge, since like charges repel the two leaves 
separate. Now, approaching a positively charged object toward the knob of the electroscope. When we approach a positively charged rod toward the knob of the electroscope, the positively charged rod attracts the electrons of the different parts of the electroscope, forcing them to move upward from the leaves toward the knob. This makes the leaves temporarily positively charged and because like charges repel, they separate. When the object or when the charged object is removed, the free electrons return their er original position. The leaves neither have excess nor deficit of electrons, then they stop interacting and relax. Now, mode 2 by conduction. Put a negatively charged rod in contact with the knob of the electroscope. As the negatively charged rod touches the electroscope, some of the electrons in the rod will transfer from the rod toward the electroscope. After removing this rod, the electroscope is left with an excess in its electrons and it becomes negatively charged. Since all the parts of the electroscope are conductors, the charge redistributes all over its entire surface. The leaves being negatively charged repel and separate. Now charging the electroscope positively using the method of conduction, put a positively charged rod in contact with the knob of the electroscope. As the rod touches the electroscope, some of the free electrons in the electroscope will transfer from the electroscope toward the rod. After removing this rod, the electroscope is left with a deficit in its electrons and it becomes positively charged. Since all the parts of the electroscope are conductors, the charge redistributes all over its entire surface. The leaves being positively charged repel and separate. Note that in this case of conduction, if the charged object is removed, the electroscope remains charged. But how can we discharge this electroscope? Simply, we can touch it, its knob to grounding and neutralize the electroscope again. Now we have this application. 
two blocks A and B of different materials are placed one after the other on the plate of an electroscope. Each block is touched with a negatively charged rod. As we see in figure 1, the electroscope initially neutral. Figure 2, the electrified rod is placed on the body A, placed on the plate. The leaves of the electroscope do not deviate. And finally, in figure 3, the electrified rod is placed on the body B, placed on the plate, but the leaves here of the electroscope deviate. Question 1. Based on the result of the experiment schematized above, specify the nature of each of the two blocks A and B, insulator or conductor. Now, the answer. Figure 2 shows that the leaves do not move apart after the contact of the charged rod with the block A and remain uncharged, then A does not allow the transfer of electrons to the leaves. Therefore, we can deduce that A is an insulator. While in figure 3, the leaves move apart after the contact of the charged rod with the block B, then block B allows the transfer of electrons to the two leaves, so B is what is a conductor. Now, in the part 2 of this question, indicate the mode used to charge the electroscope in figure 3 and deduce the sign of the charge carried by the rod and the leaves of the electroscope. The answer is electrification by contact. And some excess electrons in the negatively charged rod are transferred to the block and the leaves, then they become negatively charged. Now, part 3.1. The negatively charged rod is removed. The leaves remain apart. Justify. The answer is, after contact, the electroscope gains electrons from the rod and acquires a permanent charge, so the leaves remain separated. And finally, we have part 3.2. If we approach another positively charged rod close to block B, explain the behavior of the two leaves the answer is the positively charged rod attracts free electrons from the leaves to block B so the leaves will have fewer free electrons and they repel each other less the, devi the deviation angle will decrease in this case now it's your turn to try making your own electroscope. Now let's make a quick summary about what we have explained. We have explained that the electroscope is a device that is used for detecting whether an object is charged or not. We have a neutral object or charged object. A neutral object, the two leaves remain in their initial positions, while the charged object, the two leaves become charged with the same sign of charged object they repel and separate by induction, the two leaves have temporary charge, and by conduction, the two leaves have permanent charge. This is the end of part 3, and goodbye.